Hi, it's Jim N4BFR from Ham Radio Prep. Now, you may have heard of our satellite and space operations course where we show you how to get all the right gear and get it all together in order to capture some slow scan TV images from the International Space Station. But there's a lot of people who just don't want to invest the money. So let's take a look at another option to try and get an image. Uh, all I've got is my ICOM ID 5100 HT. We're going to dial this into the right frequency and we're going to try and pick up the slow scan TV uh, transmission as it goes past. Now, one of the important things here is we are using a very high path, so it will go almost directly overhead. And that makes a lot of difference when you're trying to get it versus if you look at passes that say uh, we are at uh, we have a 15 degree elevation or a 10 degree elevation. Those will be much harder to track with just a handheld. So let's look for our high pass that's coming up in just a few minutes and we'll get going on that. This is Ham Radio. Okay, we are about 10 minutes away from the pass. Here's the pass we've chosen. It starts at 1111 and runs until 1117. But the important piece here, max elevation 67 degrees. So it's going to be three quarters of the way up in the sky when it gets over my location. So we're going to go ahead and get the radio set up to listen on 145.800 megahertz, which is the Aeroslow Scan TV uh, frequency and set it up to record so it will capture the audio we hear and then later on we'll go in and we'll decode our images two things i've done before the iss gets here i've got about eight minutes left first thing i'm doing is i'm using the radar function on this app iss detector to see where the acquisition of signal is going to come so it's going to be this way kind of down the driveway and then where the loss of signal is going to be and that's going to be this way towards my garage so as I'm going through and I want to kind of make minor adjustments to uh, how I'm holding my handheld, those kind of things, I'll know that that is roughly where the ISS is at that point in time. The other thing I've done is I've turned on QSO recorder on my uh, radio. Uh, all that does is it records your incoming audio. So I'll be able to capture the sound file that the SSTV is transmitting uh, from the ISS and then later turn it into an image file. Frequency, I'm starting at 145.805. And why am I not starting at 145.800? That's Doppler shift. What well, Doppler shift is the compression or expansion of a frequency as it changes relative to the viewer. So the ISS is moving above me at about 17,500 miles an hour. It will start with a more compressed signal, then get to a right on that 145.800, and then with a more expanded signal as it gets further away from me over this way. So I'm gonna start high, work my way towards the center, and then go low. That'll give me a bigger opportunity to pick up more of the pass as it goes by. Okay. Um, ISS detector says the pass is going to start in two minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and start listening and get prepared, looking at my spot here where I know it's going to uh, come up. Now, I'm going to show you uh, how I'm going to hold the radio. And what I'm trying to do is hold the radio perpendicular to the antenna on the ISS. As the ISS is coming up, we're gonna be picking up the signal this way, perpendicular. As it gets higher and higher, I'm gonna be wanting to twist the radio down a little bit because at the top and peak of the signal, it's gonna be pretty much coming straight down. Then as it gets further along, I'll twist it this way and I will, uh, keep again, keep it perpendicular as the pass descends and it will uh, hopefully allow us to get uh, more audio. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but we're any second now, we should start hearing it. Now, when the ISS transmits slow scan TV, it sends it on a two minutes on, two minutes off cycle. So I just may be at a point in the cycle where it's off right when it comes up above the horizon. So I'm not gonna be too worried if I don't get it for the first minute or two. And it's just starting to rain, so. Uh, the radio gods are not smiling on me here. I like to keep the squelch all the way open when I'm doing this. Uh, this gives me the opportunity to hear even the littlest detail. It will require a little bit of audio editing when I get into trying to decode this, 
but I feel like it's a much better way to make sure I don't miss any of the data that's coming through for the slow scan TV image. There it goes. I am looking at my signal strength meter and trying to adjust it for the strongest signal possible, and this seems to be it. Now, I'm going to have to adjust for Doppler shift here in a second. It might have been a little early, but I went ahead and made my Doppler shift adjustment. We're getting closer and closer to it being above, so I'm perpendicular. That's what I'm going for here. I've got almost full strength on my S meter now. Let's see if I can turn around and show it to you. Almost full strength on the S meter. All right, that's the end of that transmission. So I think we got a really good image here. There's still an opportunity to potentially get one more if it uh, if the pass works out well. So we're gonna hang out here for two minutes. I'm looking at my clock here. It stopped right at 5.35 on this recording clock. So about uh, 7, 7.20 or so, I'll fire up the squelch again. I'll try and start listening. And I'll also be ready to make a Doppler adjustment uh, to go to 145.795. Uh, so, uh, because it will then be a descending pass and we can go ahead and check on the ISS above uh, piece. And I'm looking over here and it tells me it's already descending. So I may not get a second audio uh, image on this pass. Uh, it's telling me that it's at 34 degrees and descending. So I got one minute uh, until the transmission starts again. So we may pick up a partial second image, uh, but, uh, and I'm not gonna worry too much about it, but uh, we'll go ahead and put it on 795 and hold it vertical and see what we can get here uh, in the waning few seconds of the pass. And it should start in about 30 seconds, We'll uh, it, it should start transmitting again, and we'll open up the squelch to make sure that we're getting uh, all the even little bitty parts of the uh, audio that we can uh, to avoid avoid things. So we're at 21 degrees now, uh, as far as uh, elevation goes, uh, 20 degrees. So anything after here, I think will be a challenge, especially given uh, trees where I am, but let's go ahead and open up the squelch and see if it starts up again. There it goes. So horizontal seems to be a little bit better from a orientation perspective. I'm only getting one bar here. So 14 degrees elevation now. You can hear the noise picking up. I came back a little bit. Could very well be trees as it went behind some trees for me. So this says we're at 10 degrees elevation. We've got about another minute left on this image transmission. I'm gonna keep this open. Uh, this says it should not be visible for me anymore. So I'm still hearing it. So that's a really good sign. Everything here is pretty marginal, but we'll take it for what we can get. So a lot. So that was the end of the image. I heard the 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 sound of that and it went to static. A lot more of the image than I expected at a at a uh, down below ten degrees pass. Uh, so that's great for me. This is my first time trying to do any SSTV here in this new location. So it's nice to know that I get really good low visibility on my passes. Um, I don't know how great that second image will come out, but. What you're going to see here in a minute is uh, the image is decoded and uh, you'll get a chance to understand how you did. If you don't have a handheld with a recorder built in, you can still join in the fun. You can use an app like CQ SSTV on your phone. Then you decode it on the fly while you're hearing the transmission. Or you can use an audio recorder to record the signal and then decode that file later on a computer. So let's take a look at the two decoded images and see how they came out. All right, so you can see we definitely got some good images. We can tell that we got pictures from space and that's a lot of fun. So the important point here is you don't need a lot of gear to do it. You can get a stock handheld, stock antenna, go out, hear that audio from space. Important parts, look for a high pass, open your squelch, be ready to record and good luck.
This is Jim N4BFR. If you like this kind of video, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And if you're really interested in satellites and space operations, we have a whole course for you to check out. Visit us at hamradioprep.com. We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.